Hi, it's James from Bond with James, and today's video is about setting up your interactive notebook. I briefly spoke about this on my last blog post where I talked about just the left side, right side. So I'm going to hopefully give share some tips with you concerning how to set up your interactive notebook and then some tips for left side, right side. But I'm going to preface this first by saying there are tons and tons of great ideas on interactive notebooks on Facebook, on blogs. Um, on Pinterest, there's no one right way. You know, what works for me might not necessarily work for you. At the end of the day, you do what works for you and your students, unless, you know, your administrators are telling you to, you know, do left side, right side, or do some other method. Um, you know, I've, I've recently read some blog posts and some comments concerning left side, right side. However, I'm going to hopefully show you some tips on how to be able to effectively utilize just one left side and one right side for your interactive notebooks. So let me just go ahead and get started. As you can see, I have different colors here. Um, I'm very visual, so students would come into my class the very first day. Um, I, actually, I wouldn't have them set up their inter interactive notebooks day one. It would probably be towards the end of the, the first week of school. However, each period would have a different color. So in this example, first period is going to be pink. They would all get a pink card, and depending on what I want to use on the side or as a bookmark, they would get that in pink as well. So in this case, I'm using a pink rubber band as a bookmark, so that way, um, let me find where it's at. Wherever we left off on the previous day, the students can quickly open in their interactive notebook and say, oh, we're on page 39. Um, you could also give them a ribbon and have them use that to mark off where they this is a really old interactive notebook um that i had like five years five six years ago a, a ribbon that they can utilize in the past i just had them you tape it it's pretty much a state all year um and again i color coded that as well before additionally One of the things that I have them do when they first bring in their interactive notebook is I have them begin numbering their notebooks 1 through 50. Um, even numbers on the left, odd numbers on the right. Once they've done that, and I should preface this that um, I'm using information that my biology team at my campus utilizes. Uh, my biology team, we all have the same planning period off. So we all have fifth period off. And so we're able to plan together and we bring our interactive notebooks together. And I will say that every single teacher on the team is lockstep with their interactive notebook. So you will find the same activities, the same foldables, the same graphic organizer, the same setup in every single page. You can visit every single teacher's classroom and you would see the interactive notebooks are set up effectively like that. Not all campuses are like that. And as I said earlier, you need to do what works for you um, in your school. Each student will get a one-page sheet that says biology notebook I belong to, student name, the period. Um, if found, please return to, and the students would check off whichever teacher they have and the room number as well. Before I printed this, I whited everything out so that just for confidentiality reasons. And so this wouldn't be blank. This would actually have all the teachers' names and all the room numbers here. Uh, it would also have the online resources we wanted the students to use, how they would log into their district um, computers. Um, our course webpage, and then all the teachers and their tutoring hours. We also share students, and so let's say, for example, I'm unavailable for tutoring on you know Monday after school for some reason. Then the students can go to whatever teacher has tutoring, whatever biology teacher that has tutoring on that time, and receive assistance. On the inside front cover, there are a couple pages that we have the students tape or glue into the interactive notebook. I'm just going to show these real quick. One is Bloom's Taxonomy. Um, this comes into play because there's a choice sheet that we have students. There's a choice sheet where one of the menus might be, you know, create a quiz. And in order to do that, they might have to create level one questions, level two questions, and level three questions. Level one questions we consider very low end um, on Bloom's Taxonomy, so knowledge and comprehension. Level two might be application or analysis, and then level three might be synthesis and evaluation. Another way that students can demonstrate their understanding on the left side, or could also be a right side activity, would be through thinking maps. And then we also have prefixes, which, you know, would be, in science anyways, particularly biology, is extremely important. This is a full page. 
So I, I think later on in my video, I, I don't have examples of full pages, but you can tape and glue full pages so that way they can easily fit in an interactive notebook. See, so I've taped it here, and then I just fold it in such a way that it was able to fit in here. Okay. So page two and three, page three has a table of contents. Again, all students, if you're a student in biology at my campus, it doesn't matter what teacher you have, you have this sheet that is the same. This part might be a little bit different just depending on you know the teacher. Um, hope, for the most part, we're all lockstep. However, the first couple pages, one through 11, are the same. Um, as we progress throughout the semester, the students write in the pages based on where their teacher is at in their interactive notebook. And then here are some ideas that we have the students. So again, another choice sheet. Um, for left side activities. So if we have them do a left side, okay, we just talked about mitosis and meiosis, and now you have to write something on the left side. Here's a sheet that might help you figure out how you want to demonstrate your understanding. Also some sent sentence starters. So this can be used at any point. If they have to write questions or they have to do an activity where they're moving around the classroom, um, here are some sentence starters and question starters for the students to use in class. Page three, I'm um, sorry, page four and five just um, talks about the left side, right side, and I talked about that in my last blog post. Um, and that pretty much is it. There's some other stuff that I didn't tape in here, so I'm not completely set up. But anything that you feel is important for the students to have that can be used as reference sheets should probably go in the very beginning of your interactive notebook, whether it's in the very, um, the, the inside of the front cover, the inside of the back cover, or the first couple of pages. Um, of your interactive notebook. And like I said, the teachers and my biology team, we meet and we plan. We have a teacher rough draft where we put this together and we say, okay, this is gonna go on this page. And then they actually have um, a classroom teacher copy where the students, if you're absent or at any point they need to look at it, they can pull it from the teacher desk or wherever it's located and use it as a reference guide. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about um, how to utilize the left side and right side. I've done a lot of PD with teachers on my campus or around the district, and sometimes the struggles are different. Some teachers struggle sometimes with what goes on the left side, the output where students will interact with information on the right side to demonstrate their understanding of the content that was taught. Sometimes teachers struggle with the right side because a lot of times they will have, especially at the high school level, they will have worksheets or documents that the students will need or in terms of taking notes. And it's like, I can't fit everything on this one side, so I need to use a second page. And then once I've used that second page, now I've ended up with two left sides. What do I do? Do I use just one? Do I utilize both? Do I not utilize both? What do I do? So I'm going to... Um, talk about how to use the right side, maybe make effective use of it so that way you're not wasting space. Um, so I've already pre-taped everything for the purposes of this video. One of the things that I like to have my students do is I like to have them write the objective. So that way at any point, if they're coming in for tutoring, they can say, hey, Mr. Lies, I need help with this. Um, or if I go around and ask them, what is it that we're learning today? What's the whole purpose of this lesson? They can, especially if they have trouble articulating themselves, they can refer back to this. Or if an administrator walks into my classroom and they ask a student, a student can quickly flip and be like, hey, we're learning about that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I always have a teacher draft. So as I'm setting up my interactive notebook, and actually the biology PLC, I'm showing a chemistry version, but the biology PLC at my campus, they get together and they have teacher um, rough drafts where they kind of play around where, where things are gonna go. And then they have an actual teacher version that sits in the classroom. And I did mention this earlier, some teachers actually have a teacher version for each period. Some teachers only have one teacher version that spans for all the periods. At the end of the day, you do what works for you. Um, I've tried it both ways. I don't really particularly have a preference. Um, sometimes it's just more work, but if there are days where your classes get ahead of one another, that might benefit you via one for each class. Um, so I have this activity that I know I wanna do in my class. It's a cut and paste activity um, and it's pretty big and it involves um, two sheets six problems and students have to cut and paste. Uh, I'm gonna start with the bottom sheet. I, like I said, I've already pre-taped. I'm not gonna put it this way because it doesn't fit in my interactive notebook. Um, I'm gonna put it this way. 
it's okay for me that it covers the objective. I'm taping it down. Now I've done this before and I've just taped it here at the ends and it will work. Then I'm going to take the first page and I'm going to put it slightly above page two. Tape it down. There goes my tape. Messing up. Okay. So now I have two pages of this activity that I want my students to do. Both of them have blank space, so that way if I want to give them more practice problems or I send them home with homework, they can do the homework um, on the back sheets. And I probably wouldn't give them that many problems anyways because I want them to be able to fit on these back sheets. Additionally, I have all this white space that I can write addition have the students write additional notes or I can write more information there as well. Um, but before the students would get to this activity, we would take some notes and do some practice. And I have four sheets of notes. These are half sheets, um, meaning that I, I created these in Microsoft Word and I didn't, I threw out the other sheet. I don't know where I put it. Um, but this sheet would be right next to it on the Word document and then print it out and I would just cut it in half. So one page per two students. And I found this to be very effective instead of just putting printing a full sheet per student. Now I know there are students sometimes that have maybe IEP accommodations for visual um, needs. So you might want to make sure that you have, if you have students like that, that require full text, that you have some full sheets prepared. So again, starting with the last page in the notes set, that's going to go first. I tape that down. And again, it's over the objective, but that's okay because I didn't glue or tape directly on there. Um, you could technically glue, the way I have designed this, you can glue, have the students glue right underneath there. Um, and then they would just kind of fold this up. Then page three goes slightly above, slightly above there. Then page four, sorry, page two, I can't count. And then finally page one of the note set. And you can kind of see I have the layers page four, page three, page two, page one. So essentially I have on one sheet on the right one right side page I've taped in one, two, three, four, five, six pages. And each of these pages has blank space that the students could if you wanted to write additional information. If I wanted them to do some dimensional analysis homework and I gave them some problems, let's say I post it on my web page, they can go to the web page or whatever medium I gave them and they can write on the back. So that's how you can effectively utilize one right side page um, in your interactive notebook by creating layers and using half sheets of notes. For the left side, I don't have anything drawn, but one of the things that I've done, I do, and I talked about this on um, my previous blog post on what the left side could be used for, is that the students get a choice sheet, a choice menu. And this actually would be something that would be located either on the very front other interactive notebook or the very back, which I haven't taped it in yet, um, or glued it in yet. And they can reference, reference that at any point. So let's say for dimensional analysis, I want to write a quiz about dimensional analysis, or I want to create my one own one page paper about dimensional analysis, or I want to create vocabulary, I don't know, or a t-shirt concerning dimensional analysis. I could showcase that here. It doesn't necessarily need to be these six things that I have listed. If they can be creative and demonstrate their understanding in another way, um, that's great too. Or as a teacher, you might want to limit it. So instead of giving them a choice sheet, you might just give them two options, you know, write a quiz, with an answer key or create your one, own one page paper explaining to let's say a fifth grader how to do dimensional analysis. Um, they would do that on the left side. So as far as setting up your left side, right side, I hope I gave you some tips that you can use in your class. Um, and also setting up your interactive notebook at least at the beginning. Um, please feel free to leave me any comments or questions in the bottom in the comment section. Thanks for watching.